Hello and welcome to Mastermind 911 with Sarita. Today the Lord brought back to me a word that um he had given me on April the 12th. I think that was. Let me make sure. Yeah, April the 12th, 2023. And it is desensitized, as you can see here on the screen. Desensitized, right here. The Lord had um, given me this word on April the 12th, 2023. And so um, when I was just thinking to myself, this word came back to me. And so like usually if God wants me to like um, talk about something, he'll bring it back up to me or he'll give it to me in a, another word, but the same word, pretty much the same meaning pretty much. And so my job here is to just uh, bring you the word from God, um, give it to you like the word says it. And um, basically that's it. <laughs> I'm just here to warn the church pretty much um, to what's happening, what will happen. And um, we know we prophesy in parts. We don't get everything all at once. And so when he do, uh, give this to me i try to um get it out here this word um i didn't get out right away because the lord has been speaking so much to me and i'm trying to get all the videos out um on every word pretty much that he gave me the words that don't mean the same thing so i'm trying to like put them all together and then um get them all out here so let's talk about desensitized because i don't want to make this video too long i know my videos has been long but god has a lot to say and so i'll be trying to get it like <laughs> um in at least 30 minutes um or below but i cannot so i'm gonna have to figure that out and see like what can i do to because I know people, um, attention span is, is, is low. And if you like me, I'm going to be skipping through the video or either I'm not going to watch it when it's like so long. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So we'll, we'll get some understanding to what time we're in. Okay. As I said, the word is desensitized. Desensitized means make less sensitive make less sensitive so when you make something um less sensitive then that means you are numb to it right here you are dead to it you are insensible to it you are senseless to it you have no feelings whatsoever me unfeeling um you are stunned you are frozen you are paralyzed and those are just some words, you know, that I wanted to uh, help you to understand what this word really means. Um, if you're not sensitive to something, then you are basically, the best word is numb. <laughs> the best word is numb. You are numb to a situation. So what is numb? Let me see if I can click on this. Okay, yeah. So if you're numb to something, that means deprived of feelings or responsiveness. So you are unresponsive to it, like you won't respond to it. Um, and it's happening without you really even paying attention to it because that's that's how the enemy works like when he's trying to incorporate something into your life without you knowing what he's doing he come in ways that you will not notice like what's going on and so um that's what's happening in this world um let's see this kind of mean like the same thing yeah that kind of mean like okay to cause a part of the body to lose sensation hands numbs by the cold the injection will numb the area 
to be operated, make someone unable to think, feel, or react normally, but there is no humor in natural born killers. So I don't know what they were talking about right there. But um, let's just say to make someone unable to think, feel, or react normally. So things that we would normally react to, we don't react to it anymore as the children of God. Like we allow things to happen and um it's basically like infiltrate when um something come in unnoticed like or sublinear when you don't notice that something is happening because you get accustomed to it and you start thinking it's normal <laughs> and it's not normal um they say it's normal behavior or um it's um well, maybe people, you know, are not like we was back in the days type of thing. You start making excuses for people behavior. You start saying, well, they are, they're not our age. You know, they are younger. Um, things like that that I do hear in this world where uh, we are now making excuses for uh, behaviors that is not of God. And... If God cares, I care. So obviously he cared because he gave me the word. So he care about um, what's happening in this world. And so I'm going to read a scripture or two that is going to uh, let you know what's going on. Okay, Matthew 24, 12. It said, and because lawless lawlessness which means iniquity which means sin shall abound the love of many shall wax cold so people have this no care attitude that long as it's not me or long as they're not talking about me um i can care less pretty much um you can see something wrong and we will not open our mouth and say anything. I am guilty as charged because personally me, I say, I don't want to get caught up in that. <laughs> I don't want to, um, basically it's like once you put yourself, inject yourself into mess, people going to start coming after you. They're going to start coming after you because um, of mess, because people love mess. And so I'd rather not inject myself into such things um, to be noticed or to be um, seen. I'm a person that likes to stay behind the scene, but God, <laughs> God is pushing me towards the front when I don't want to be in the front, um, God is God is raising up uh um people that who is um gonna honor his name, who is gonna love him for real, who is gonna serve him for real, who is gonna call, who is gonna dot the I, cross the T, and not care about feelings. Now in that area, I am that person. Because uh, when I see something that is out of order, I hate things out of order. Like, I really do. It really irks my nerve. And it is because of the call on my life. It irks my nerve. Um, if you see me looking up, I'm looking up at my TV with me talking, looking at the stuff <laughs> in the bed. I need to be looking at my camera. I'm so used to looking at TV. But it really irks my nerve. Um when i see things out of order it vets my spirit basically it vets my spirit to to see things out of order say if i see husband and wife out of order i see the church out of order or i see children out of order like it really vets my spirit which is supposed to happen because like i said the things that my father care about i care about as well and so we cannot continuously sit back and allow the enemy to just have his way because that's that's really what we're doing we are giving space 
to the enemy and and his his little imps um people who work for him we are giving space to um his tactics because if the children of god are not on our posts and we are caught off guard guess what our opponent can sneak and kill us or attack us because we're not where we need to be we're not in the word like we should be we're not um we're not praying like we should be. We're not fasting like we should be. And so when things happen in this world, we are caught off guard like, God, did you warn me? And God said, I sent warning before destruction. And so um, that is one of the scripture. And because of lawlessness, lawlessness means sin. Like people do not practice law. As I did a video on law, um, who the law is for. And I was talking about in the video that the law is for people who break the law. Um, Jesus didn't come to do away with the law, but um we are to still keep the law. It did not um he did not take away the law. But in case we make a mistake, we're under grace. But it still don't exempt the law for, from us uh, because the Bible said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And the only time we're able to sin is because the word is not in our heart. And because we, we look over what God say don't do, which is the Ten Commandments. And I have them on my wall over here. That should not, number one, that should not have no other gods before me. You see that happening. That should not make unto me any graven image. You see that happening. Um, that should not take the name of the Lord, thy God in vain. You see that happening. Um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. You oh my God. Like you see so much, so many children. Um, so out of order, so disobedient um, to parents, to the elders. Um, thou shall not kill. We see so much of that. The shooting, the sense of the shootings and things like that. Even with the mouth, um, killing. Thou shall not commit adultery. We see so many men and women committing adultery, cheating on their wives and the husbands and things like that. Um, fornication, pretty much. Um, people having sex without feeling anything from it. Like like I said, it has become normal. It's a normal thing that um that I've heard somebody say the Lord told us to be few and multiply, but he ain't tell you in that way <laughs> to be few and multiply. Um he said every man should have his own wife and every woman should have her own husband. So that means you are to, is one wife and one husband and that's who you should you supposed to multiply and sleep with. Um that should not steal. We see a lot of that robbery and things like that, and people stealing the word of God, uh, which what the thieves are doing, the, the uh, false prophets and teachers are doing these things, stealing things from God's children. Um, play, plagiarism. That should not bear false witness against thy neighbor. We see a lot of that. That should not covet. We see that as well so people are breaking the law like it's nothing god's law like it's nothing and they say god is a forgiving god god loves me you know even though i uh, make mistake god loves me they are taking scripture out of context and they are uh trying to justify their sins and make it seem right and that's why God said to me, it's so much pride in the church because what you have done is made your way of things right and God's way of doing things wrong. And that is not correct. And so that is why we're so desensitized to what's happening um, in this world because the church is also doing these things. Is it everybody? No, but uh you see you don't see people who is caring more about people's soul nowadays it's all about you know um 
things you're going to get and all of that. Nothing is nothing about the soul. And so um, when we see our sister and brother fall, uh, the first thing they say, um, we all make mistakes. We all were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I can give you the scriptures that um, is picked out just to justify sin, but you leave the rest of the Bible out. Because <laughs> all of the Bible go with each other. It's not just one or two scriptures. It's more than uh, one or two scriptures that fit together. This is where you got to cross-reference the scripture. Okay, so let's go to 2 Thessalonians um, Two. Let me see. Second Thessalonians. Oh, let me read down here in my Bible what it says by um verse chapter twenty four verse twelve. It says, "Many shall come." Refers to the parable of false messiah who have now spanned the centuries of of church history and have led many astray into false religious cults. So it's a lot of cults going on out here and religion is one religion is one religion is just control and manipulation pretty much all it is is control and manipulation um i'm gonna play on i'm gonna play on your weakness to get you to do what i want you to do and that's what false prophets and leader i did a video on that so you can go back and look at that if you want to know more about what false prophets and teachers um, do. How they infiltrate the, the church just to have their way and get what they want. And, you know, they, they do it to people. The government and things like that does it as well. The news do it. Like, they'll give you a little bit of the truth and then they put the lies in. And so you won't be able to... Um, tell the difference between the the truth and the the truth and the lie and that's what they're trying to do they're trying to shut god out pretty much that's what religion do religion trying to shut jesus out and trying to uh make it seem like jesus did not come to do what he said that he came to do and so um i've seen videos talking about um that um uh, having a, a if, if you divorce then um um you are still married to that person if that person is a is still alive if you and you have gotten a written divorce at that like that person is still their still their wife like i don't understand what kind of god that people think that we're serving but uh, Jesus came here and died for all of that. So you can't throw shame on people and guilt on people to make them, just because you believe something, to make them believe it. And so um, that's one of the religious things that I have seen going around out here. Now, do we supposed to be getting divorces from our husband or our, our, our wives for no apparent reason? No, um, Jesus does not want that which what the pharisees was doing back then he don't want that but um um if he said if you get caught in the act of adultery or immorality you know uh, fornication pretty much you know it's okay to um get a divorce and then you know if a woman being beaten and things like that you think god want them in something like that so i'm supposed to stay and wait till my husband get saved if he's be me Y'all, uh, y'all, uh, this religion thing, like, for real, for real, like, take me away from it. I came up in that, and I want no part of it. Okay, so 2 Thessalonians um, 3. 2 Thessalonians 3, it said, Let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless... The apodicy, it said Paul is referring to a specific future event, comes first. That is the great rebellion. Apodicy means the great rebellion, the abandonment of faith by professed Christians. And 
Do we see that happening? Yes. And the man of lawlessness, again, there it go, is revealed. Oh, they they practice sin. That's, that's what they're doing nowadays. They are practicing sin is revealed. The son of destruction, which means the antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and so insolent, insolently above. Every so-called God or object of worship so that he actually enters and takes his seat in the temple of God, publicly pro proclaiming that he himself is God. <laughs> so these things are supposed to happen. And God knows they are supposed to happen, but the church at like, are uh, we at like we have forgotten um, that the Bible said there shall be a great falling away. But the church don't so, supposed to be desensitized to it. You supposed to um, look for these things and you supposed to pray. And uh, we supposed to be on our post. But if we are caught off guard, then um, a lot of things... Um, will start happening to us as well because you're basically now the church is basically now looking like the world no cares of the world honey um i ain't going out there witnessing to nobody because um it ain't me <laughs> don't care about people's souls whatsoever don't ever tell people about god uh i've heard listen my dad says that um he don't have to witness about jesus because <laughs> because his life speaks for itself and trust me his life does not speak for itself listen uh if i went into it but i love my dad so i ain't gonna talk about his life but no it ain't it but if if you you would think because somebody talks about god they love god but that is that is not the case because uh, God said man looks at the outside, at the outer appearance, but he looks at the heart. And so God knows whether we love him or not. And he tell us to look at the fruits. And so by me looking at his fruits, I know without a shadow of a doubt that that ain't it. But in his mind, because um, he's in a cult and he's um, being deceived, because he even also said that um, parts of the Bible is not real. So, you know, um, people people are being deceived. Like, like they say, what, the, the Bible um, is a white man book. The white man wrote the Bible. Like, it's all kinds of stuff going on out here that we can see that we are in the end time. Because, um, and, and the saints of God is not standing up for it. The saints of God is sitting back, not saying anything. I used to say all the time when God was showing me things, giving me things um, concerning the church, and I would put it on Facebook, but I wouldn't have not one Christian, not one Christian would come onto my post and say, sis, listen, we let's pray together. Like I'm with you or nothing like that. They would sit back and not say anything and just allow things um to go on and to happen in the church just to keep their people in the church just to keep what whatever number of people in their church just to keep the the dollars coming in you know they'll sit back and they would just allow anything to happen in the church but god say not anymore he is tired of it and he see us he see everything that we are doing and not doing okay um the next one is second timothy three one and three the one i just not too long ago got through talking about okay i'm i'm gonna start at two 
Well, I'm going to start at one, which, which is talking about difficult times will come. Uh, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous time of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear for people will be lovers of self. This is, this is desensitized as well. People will become lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, re revelers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, meaning talking about, you know, the, the LGBT, whatever, Q plus, whatever community. Um, that's what it's talking about. Women's loving, women's and men's loving. Men, it's, it's not normal. <laughs> it's nothing normal, but it has become a norm to people because they are desensitized to um, what's real and what's not real. So God said, I will turn you over into a reprobated mind. And that's what a lot of people have been turned over to. Go read Romans 1. I will turn you over into a reprobated mind. Meaning, you think you're right, I'm going to let you think you're right. When God knows you're not right. But I'm going to let you think that way. Um, It says, collapsed and inhumane, irre irreconcilable, ma malicious, gossips, um, devoid of self-control, intemperate, immoral, brutal, haters of good. They hate people that do good. They hate people that talk about God, you know, and things like that. Um, traitors, reckless, conceited, mean and prideful, lovers of sensual pleasures rather than lovers of God. Um, that's debauchery. Um, holding to a form of outward God in this meaning that their outer appearance show God, 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 but their heart is missing it. <laughs> um, Holding a form of godliness, holding a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far away from them. Listen. God is not playing. God is not playing. Because we we supposed to know what time we're in. But the saint has has gone to sleep. The church has gone to sleep. And acting like we don't know nothing. Because um oh I don't want to get in that. I'm like, listen, I just don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> and I'm talking about me. But guess what? It's not about us, it's about the kingdom of God. It's not about our feelings. It's not about our emotions. It's not about, um, you know, um, how we feel, how we think. You know, it's about God. And it's all about him. And it's always been about him. And it's still about him. And it's going to forever be about him. And we can't change that. Um, and, you know, this, this really hit home for me by me being his mouthpiece. And, you know, I just... Like, I just didn't, I just don't want to deal with people in that way. With the, For me, it was senseless things. Like, you know, like, I just, <laughs> I just didn't want to um, get into it. But God sees and he knows. And so Jeremiah tell us, don't be afraid of their faces. And we have to not be afraid of their faces hold on galatians 2:21 let me see something i think this was the one where i saw nullify for the first time. I wish I would have underlined it. 
Galatians. Oh, two. Let me run. Can't do that. Why it can't do? Well, we're not going to go into that. I'm going to, I was trying to look at what I saw on Nullified, and I was like, oh my goodness. And I should have underlined it, but I did not. Oh, it said 21. I was like, good Lord, I can't see. <laughs> I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, um, okay, here it goes. Oh, there it is. There it is. It says, first straight it means to nullify. Paul is pointing out that if one group denied the grace of God by accepting Christ for some, and then this is the point that you secure salvation. For it is the reason that Paul did not attempt to nullify God's grace. I mean, to frustrate God's grace. It is not owed to righteousness, salvation by the law. Like we we do, I'm gonna explain this um, because a lot of people get, you know, grace mixed up with the law, and um, the children of God does not we do we do not live under the law. We live under grace because of what Jesus Christ came to do, did when He gave Himself as a ransom over two thousand years ago um, for our sin. So it's not our sin that we're going to hell for is our unbelief, which causes us to stay in sin. And so um, we are under grace, you know, um, if we fall, but not willfully, not willfully just keep falling over and over and over and over again. Because he said, those that know to do right and do it not, you're going to be with, with many stripes. So if you know the word, if you know um, what the word tell us not to do the whole um the holy spirit lives inside of us and it brings he brings correction he brings um all things back to your memory so like if you're about to step out of alignment with god he will um quickly put you back in alignment how do i know because he did me um like that so um it's um like i said the only time that you are um under the law because the law is supposed to be written in your heart and you're supposed to remember that i can't just you know um go out and commit adultery i can't just go out and um um adopt another god you know things like this because it still stands like it still stands but um sometimes we we fall like you know not willfully but we fall and we need the grace of god because of what he did on the cross he reminded us you know um this is what i paid for because he already paid the price for us um but just willfully sinning now nah, that ain't gonna do it's not gonna do um the bible said god will forgive everything except for blasphemy against the holy spirit and so um he will forgive sin but blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So nothing is too hard for God. But if you are a believer, you shouldn't just be falling. You shouldn't just be falling just because, you know, grace is, is there to um cover you. Because 
God knows the heart. It all goes back to God knows the heart. So God know that he know if you knew what you was doing. And I love that scripture because um, it causes me to not do things, things according to people knowledge because people will say, oh, this ain't right and that ain't right. But God, you know, um, he know that I'm doing it from my heart. Um, and he knows that I'm doing it according to the knowledge that I know that he has given me. So um, it's not for show or anything like that. But God knows if um, something is not real. He knows if something is not real. So um, God judges the heart of man. And we can't get away with anything. We can't get away with anything. So he already know if you know <laughs> what you was doing. He already know that you knew not to do it. But people make up excuses, you know, trying to get over. You try to get over on man, but you can't get over on God. That's the thing. You try to get over on man, the person that you should be, you know, um, afraid to lie to, you know, because the Bible said the big uh, um, fear is the beginning of wisdom. And so, you know, when we fear God, not in a bad way, not in us being scared or guilty, you know, coming to God, but knowing that if I, you know, just go out here and just, you know, um, and, and just sin just because I know he gonna forget. That's scary. That's, that's like playing with God. And we cannot play with God. And so, saints of God, we have to grow up. You know, um, it's a time and a place for everything. We have to grow up and we have to, um, we have to be about our father's business and we have to live the life before other people so that they would know that, um, you know, you, you can live this life. You can live this life. According to the word, it's about your it's by your faith. So the the Bible said, um, Jesus said that he have he has given all of us a um portion of faith. So it's according to your faith, the way you think about it is the way you're gonna perceive it, is the way you're gonna um do it. And so if you really don't believe, it shows that you really don't believe. Like that's in your heart, and that's what we gotta understand. Like it's in our heart, and what's in our heart gonna show up. Because the uh, Jesus told um, the Pharisees when the disciples didn't wash their hand and they had such a problem with it because it was a ritual of their own that they had adopted. Um, Jesus told them that, you know, it's not what comes up out of a man. I mean, it is not what goes in a man. Um, it's what comes up out of a man. I'm sorry. It's not what goes in a man, but it's what comes up out of a man that defiles um, the man. So it defiles the heart. So out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you're going to know if this person is, you know, um, who they say they are, because out of the, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. is going to eventually, because you can't keep pretending it's going to eventually come out. What's in the heart going to eventually come out. It's going to eventually come out. And so, um, that's the end of this, um, the end of this this broadcast this program whatever you want to call it this is the end uh, i'm gonna end it right here but understand that god cares and he knows and he's looking and he's listening listening to um what we are doing because my husband and i have been having a conversation uh one time and the lord just dipped in it and he was like you know we was talking something about slavery and uh, we was talking to each other something about slavery and the Lord said segregation. Huh? Wait, Lord. <laughs> the Lord be in the conversation with you. He be in the conversation with you. So he want us to know that he hears because he do. He hears what we're talking about. He's like, he's in here. He's in your heart and he hears and he knows if you are, um, or not his and he knows if um you mean well or you don't like he do and so that's why you don't have to be afraid of man at all but you do need to have a fear of god not the wrong fear not guilt 
not being scared of him, but the, the right fear, which is the beginning of wisdom, which is understanding who he is pretty much. You're understanding who he is and and then you won't you wouldn't want to go do what you want to do because you know that if i did like sin separates me from god pretty much you know that if i go out here and sin and the scripture of adam and eve to think about what eve did and then um it separated them from god you know um uh, it killed them spiritually it's, it was a separation that happened and so um we remember that like we remember what sin does and i don't want that to happen to me and that's what every child of god should um should think about that what is this gonna do if i do this or the, that you know somebody need to come back up with the bracelets again what would jesus do because that bracelet was everything it's a reminder of what jesus do this if i decided to just go and lay up with somebody would jesus do this that brace is gonna remind you no but the holy spirit himself reminds you as well that like listen if you do this because one and come before destruction if you do this it's consequences for your actions he gave me the word ramification which means consequences it's consequences for your action if you break the law you gotta pay for it simple as that if you break God's law when he told you don't go do such and such and such and then you break that law it's consequences for your actions but people don't want to pay a price for their action Jesus already paid the price but you didn't believe that you didn't believe he already paid the price so you went out there and did what you want to do so now you got to pay the price because you tried to do you tried to you let that thing be a God in your life is what you did you let that thing be a god in your life instead of god being god in your life and so when you made it a god in your life now now you got to pay for that being a god in your life because god already sent his son to die for your sin but you did not believe that and so when you went out and did it there's consequences Lord Hembers. Consequences for our actions. There's ramification behind what we do. That's it. That's all. Um, y'all subscribe to this channel. Um, like the video or comment on the video. Um, turn on your bell notification. So when I um put up another video, you'll be the first to know. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, no, I've got to stop it.